That's 1938 BX wire, that cloth covered stuff. This house is due for a rewire, complete rewire. guys, we're in my living room and I've got a problem with this light. I've already turned power off and uh, I'm going to do a fix. You might have had the same problem. It's a nice light, it fits the space, it's on theme with other light fixtures in this place. So I don't necessarily just want to swap it out. Um, I think it might be original to the home. So I'm going to try to fix it. Get access to the broken socket. See this fixture will accept three bulbs and I've got two LEDs in there but the third socket has been damaged somehow. So what I'm gonna to try to do is replace that socket so I can put a third bulb in here and brighten up this room a little bit. It's, yeah, the um, plastic is discolored. Probably too high of a wattage light bulb. It just cooked slowly over time and then it finally cracked and failed. All right, what I can tell is as I'm turning that, it's twisting the wiring, I can feel that resistance. So I'm gonna have to take the whole fixture down so that I can access the wiring on the backside to avoid kinking, knotting, and damaging the wire when I remove the socket. I'm gonna push the hot conductor, at least how it was wired, over that direction. Okay, I can tell that's the neutral. Sometimes it's hard on the old wiring. That's 1938 BX wire, that cloth covered stuff. This house is due for a rewire, complete rewire. So what can you charge for a job like this? The answer is probably almost anything you want without losing credibility. If a customer's got an old fixture that's got intrinsic value to them, for whatever reason, originality, historicity, not a lot of, I'm not aware of anybody in our area who will rewire or repair old fixtures. So if you're willing to source some parts and get creative, you might have a uh, market in which there is no competition. So if your bill for, I'm gonna spend about uh, 12 bucks on parts from Amazon, and if your bill ends up being three or 400 bucks, chances are, if it's a fixture like this, homeowner's gonna pull the trigger on that, and you're gonna have travel time and 30 to 60 minutes on site. It's a good gig. All right. So I've got that loosened up. Let's try to get this socket out. That's the next goal. All right, so that's what we're looking at. There's the broken part. It would not hold a light bulb. And what I need to do is get the wiring disconnected and get that spun off. I'm gonna have to trim the wiring because there's no set screw connection. So let's get some diagonal cutters in there and just cut that as high as we can to preserve as much length to the wiring as possible. We'll finish spinning that off there. There it is. Pull that sleeve off. Set it aside. And I've got set screw. Brass, silver, black, white. That's how I'm going to make that connection. So I'm keeping my wiring threaded through here. I don't want to pull it all the way out. That's just going to cost time and hassle trying to get it back through there. So. feed it through. The only uncertainty I've had in this project is really whether this fitting is going to match up to the replacement socket. And the answer is yes. Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. All right. Let's strip these connections back and seat them in our terminals. So I'm going to drop a link for you in the description. This miniature kind of socket is called candelabra. And that's exactly what I searched, replacement candelabra socket on Amazon. You can often find these parts at your home stores. There'll be a lighting repair parts section on an end cap in the lighting aisle of like your Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's. And it's likely that they'll have something along these lines. Now this is a very low power connection it's a very small screw and it's very lightweight metal. So take precaution. You're not shooting for death grip. Be gentle. I wrapped it around the righty tighty to match the direction that I turned the screw. I'm gonna pre-twist my wires. I'm gonna just by hand 
give that small stranded wire a shepherd's hook. Now you can really get in over your head rewiring old fixtures and uh, sometimes they'll just break, just fall apart in your hands. And so you've got to have caveats and protections in your language to your customer or your wife who may be your customer and just say I cannot guarantee the integrity of this fixture. It very well could fail as soon as it becomes, gets handled or manipulated. You have to understand the inherent risk that's being taken here and I cannot unfortunately be responsible for that risk. I'm going to do my very best for you and that's all I can promise. And when they hear that, I think their confidence will be sufficient to allow you to proceed. All right, <clears throat> so I've got that lock washer. Stacking my pieces here. Ooh, almost forgot my, my insulator. You've got to have that insulator to protect the terminals. There it is. All right, that's looking good. It's a nice length match. That's the one thing to watch out for. I had some options for longer sockets, so I actually took that measurement before ordering the replacement socket. Slide this through. And then really the last point of caution is as you're twisting this nipple back into place, you want to make sure the wire is turning freely so that it's not binding up anywhere because the wire that's in a bind will end up being in a short. There it is. I'm going to put my light bulb in. Great. If you've got tips and tricks on how to make money repairing and rewiring older fixtures, I'd love it if you shared it with me and with our community. I do not have extensive experience, but if you're working in an area with older homes and it's something you can offer to your customer, you can easily stock a few basic parts on your van, some very inexpensive wire, and pick up easy projects that have a high level of customer satisfaction a very unique market differentiator, because I don't know many electricians who do this, and an excellent margin and cause for customer referral. This is the kind of little bit of extra that you can charge for, and it will show up in their Google review. I'm stripping back these wires a little bit further so I can get a better pre-twist. The fact that there's three of them gets a little bit busy when you're making final connections. Oh, it's tricky. Get it wrapped in there. Oof. Come on. Hoping that'll grab, grab all the wires. And it looks like it has. If you didn't do that pre-twist, there's no way it would have grabbed those little stranded conductors, each and every one of them. All right, just put it right there. All right, I've got the fixture secured. And before I go too far, I just want to test and make sure it works. Boom. All right. I've made my customer happy. I've increased the level of light in this room. I want to walk away on a typical job like this with 250, 300 bucks. It may not be worth running out just for that one small task. But man, if you can increase customer satisfaction, in a substantial way that makes them want to tell stories to their friends. That's the reputation you're looking for. That's a contractor who will never lack for work. It's someone who's happy and ready and willing to serve. That's who you want to be. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.